So welcome back. This is going to be my full technical analysis for the commodities market for Monday, uh, uh, November 23rd in 2020. And uh, we'll start by looking at the US dollar. But first of all, this week has been one probably one of the worst week uh, I've ever traded, mainly due to the amount of uh, of news that major news that has been in this week. So it has been really really difficult to trade this week, and um, even though I planned my 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 trades for several hours, in, uh, some of them did work, but some of them um, have not worked yet, and that is mainly due to the US dollar. Um, I did expect this, for example, rally here to continue. And it didn't. It just fell apart. We have rounded off again here, but uh, but uh, at this point, it is to be seen where we go higher. I think that we are going to go higher. I think that this level here, which we have tested so often um, back in time, that this is enough support in order to get the US dollar index higher. And of course, that will be very negative for most of the currencies or the currency that we have been uh, investing in, for example, the Aussie US dollar, that will fall. Uh, the gold uh, WTI will fall. The same will go for the indices will also fall and so on. So the investments that we have or uh, trades that we have done for this week, they will probably be much more profitable next week. And that's the reason why I'm holding on to them. And also one reason why I haven't invested more because um, I have uh, quite a lot of capital outstanding on those investments. So therefore, I want to minimize my risk. Technical indicators for this are fairly flat at this point, but I do believe on Monday we'll see a green candlestick here and then we'll slowly go up towards the 50 moving average. And that will have quite an enormous effect on commodities and precious metals. So let's look at oil. We have rallied yet again. This is pure speculation. This has nothing to do with demand in the world economy. Absolutely nothing. Because demand just isn't there at this point. We are basically in the world economy that is in a standstill. Major resistant here at the 43.65 and underneath that we have another uh, quite a lot of resistance here at 33.18 and uh, then we also have this resistant area here so just look at this this entire area here is significant resistant all of them and if we get past that then of course we go significantly higher but i don't really see how we're going to do that we'll probably rally up towards one of these lines. That may happen, but that only means that the fall will be bigger. For example, one of these, or one of these, or one of these. So what I think is going to happen here is that the US dollar is going to appreciate, and we are going to see this turn around towards the 50. So I've targeted the 50 around 39.8. If that breaks, I'll change my my take profit all the way down to 36.8. That is where probably this market will go next week or a week or two. So that is my my trade, uh, what, what I think is going to happen in, in, in oil. So if you look at natural gas, which has been a real turd this week, we broke down quite significantly on Monday, rally up towards the 50 moving average, I was considering making a short here. I've just done that trade several times before in the past, and it has never worked. So that's the reason why I did not make that trade. I wanted to short this, but my experience was don't do that. Just don't do it again, because it can end up really badly, because it could have gone the other way, and then you would never ever get that, uh, that price level again. But um, we rallied today quite significantly. We pulled back. But the problem now is that the 50 moving average is no longer support. It is resistant, as we saw here. So we may rally, but when we get close to the 50, we need to break that. We also need to break these highs in order to confirm that we are going back to this previous trend. Other than that, I think that we are going to rally up towards the 50 and then can go even lower 
towards around 2.5. That's probably as low as this market will go. But it is really difficult to trade this market without knowing where it goes because the movements are so significant. 5, 4, 6% is very normal for natural gas. So if you look at copper, I will... Um, I will uh, say that I did oh, um, did enter this market too early. I did not expect this market to rally above three uh, three point uh, two five nine. That is, I thought was the very top of this market, and also why I put a stop loss right above that. But we rallied to the very highs here. You can see the top here back in two thousand eighteen and also here in 2018 and 2017 was it so we have three uh, tops here and at this point i think that we're going to turn around and i don't think that we have enough momentum to go to the upside especially the us dollar starts appreciating so i am shorting this still uh, towards the 50. Uh, i think these technical indicators are turning are going to turn around we are overbought at this point and uh, we're going to see something similar to this. I thought it was going to happen here. I thought we were going to gradually go towards the 50. But we went higher. But now I think that we're going to see a similar move to this. And that's the reason why I'm still holding on to the copper trade. Um, and so on. So let's uh, look at gold. There is not a lot to say about gold. Other than that, we are still looking for a pullback towards the 1800 level. So until we see that, I have no interest in basically buying this, no interest in, 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 in selling it either. We need to pull back towards this area that coincides with that area there and the 200 moving average right underneath. And there will be an enormous amount of buyers coming in to buy this from there. This is what most traders have been looking for for a very long time. It's basically a pull back towards the, the 1800 or the 20, 200, exp, 20, 200 moving average in order to buy this for the long run. I don't see this market uh, going downwards. I think that we're going to see a moving like this and then up towards the 2000 and 2100. So let's look at silver. It is... Uh, very similar, and as you can see, there's a storm outside today in the Faroe Islands, uh, so hope you, yeah. Okay, so we rallied up towards the 50 uh, moving average and broke down again, and there's another proof that the uh, 50 moving average is acting as significant uh, resistance for this market. There is just a matter of time, I think, before we fall all the way down towards the $20 uh, $20 range. If you look at the Fibonacci retracements, we can see that uh, this fits perfectly with the first Fibonacci retracement. The second is here around $20, $21 and so on. So that would make a lot of sense that we'll uh, pull back to that area and there will be enormous amount of buyers coming in to pull this market higher. I'm no interest in basically selling this or buying this at this point. We need a pullback similar to a gold market uh, at this point. So let's look at Platinum. Platinum has rallied a little bit and then pulled back. Now it's showing the real sign of weakness. This is, if we get a candlestick right underneath here, they will basically make a top here. And that means that we are going down. So this is probably a trade I'm going to do on Monday. Uh, we'll see where the next candlestick is going to be. Technical indicators for platinum are looking very, uh, well, well, not very negative, but are looking more negative now than they did prior. So no interest in buying this. I'm going to short this towards the uh, 50 moving average if we get that chance. So if you look at platinum, no, sorry. We can see that, uh, well, we've done similar, the same thing. Um, as we have done uh, the last uh, week and a half. And that is we rallied to the 50, pull back, and then nothing really happens. We need to break the 50 in order to go to these highs. We need to break down here in order to buy to go these highs. So until that happens, we are basically stuck in this range. There's no reason to enter for a buy or sell 
at this point because it can go either way. Uh, I don't think that will break the 200 moving average. If we pull back towards the 200, then that is a massive buying opportunity for the very highs here. So if you look at aluminium, we can see that we are starting to round off in aluminium. And this is also going to be a trade that I'm going, most likely going to do on Monday. And that is to short aluminium down towards the 50 moving average. I don't often do that trade. I'm going to do it and do it in copper, for example, because I'm pretty sure that it's going to happen. Uh, but this is even better. Uh, this is so far away from the 50 moving average and all of these technical indicators are turning around and we're significantly overbought. So aluminium is a uh, possible uh, short to the or sell to the to the downside, and that is it is not a very risky trade at this point because it's almost um, certain that we are going to go towards the 50 moving average. And that means don't buy aluminium. So nickel. We can see that we have rallied quite significantly. We ran into uh, resistance here at 16.112, uh, and uh, that is a little bit higher than these previous highs. We most likely will go higher from here. Technical indicators for nickel are very bullish, so we may see uh, 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 an even higher on the Monday session, probably going to take out these very highs. So that is interesting. Um, I'm not going to enter this market. I want this to pull back towards the 50, which I was expecting it to do. I thought it was going to go down here and then go up, but it didn't do that. So until it does, I'm not going to enter this market whatsoever. So if you look at sugar, we can see that we pulled back quite significantly. And as expected, we found uh, support here around 0.1486, but I don't think that's going to be the end. I think this is only the beginning. This is a big warning sign that we are going to go lower in this market. This was just a taste of what is about to come. So we will probably go down here all the way down to this level, which will where we'll run into the 50 moving average, and then you can buy it to the upside. So this is a warning sign. Do not buy this at this point. This is not going to go uh, to the upside, it is most likely going to go down as these indicators are also indicating, especially the CCI. So if you look at cotton, we can see that we have rallied even further, broken these highs. And yes, this was a trade that I should have entered on Wednesday when we had this rally. I missed that, can't get all of those in those trades, but this week has been nearly impossible to trade because of all of the uh, the vaccine news and stimulus news and Brexit news and election news and so on and so on. And it has been just been making havoc on the uh, stock market and the market as a whole um, this, um, this week. So we'll see where we'll, um, where we'll end here. It's, it's hopeless to buy this now. This is turning around and we'll most likely go and test these um, previous highs again. We'll see whether or not that hold, if, if, if it holds. If it doesn't, then we'll go down to this area and that will probably coincide also with the 50 moving average moving up this way. So this is a, basically a, a trade that should have been done, but we didn't. I, I didn't. So let's look at Kokoa. And this is the, probably the trade of next week. So I got a lot of questions whether or not I should enter this for a, sh for a short. I said no several, several times. The reason for that is that I want to see this market with a red candlestick here, indicating that we are about to go lower. Um, this market can go extremely parabolical, as we saw here, and we also saw here. So this move, we have done it before, and... It is possible that, for example, if we compare this move to that move, if you take the Fibonacci retracements here, we can see that it nearly perfectly coincides with the first Fibonacci retracement. And if that is the case, then this move will most likely do the same thing. And that means that we'll fall towards the 2.543 level, probably a little bit lower than that, 
because, uh, because this basically pierced the, the very lows of, of and nearly got to 50. But this is a possible trade towards the first or the second Fibonacci retracement, and then uh, then we go higher from there or even lower. Technical indicators for and for Kokoa are looking uh, very negative at this point, so it is nearly. Uh, certain that we are going to turn around from here. So this is not a very risky trade to do at this point because it's so overstretched. So last but not least, it is wheat. And as you can see, we have done nothing. We did rally, pull back, and at this point, I think we are going to see just more of the same. We may see something similar to cotton that we basically just explode to the upside, you'll find resistance here at the 610 and then to these very highs at 632. Break below this opens the door to uh, 575 and then all the way down here to 547. So yes, this is a market that can go by uh, uh, either way. At the moment, technical indicators are looking very uh, bearish. So keep that in mind, we could go uh, lower from here. So Hope you find this helpful. Um, this was a really tricky to, uh, week to trade. Um, hopefully everybody made a little bit of money and uh, ne hopefully next week will be significantly better. Some, some weeks, they're just horrible. So good luck and good weekend and see you on Monday.